Competition is defined as having a worthy opponent. My question to us is, are you a worthy opponent for yourself and for your teammate? So when we get on that pitch today and, you know, for all of our sessions that we've got and every game we've got, our job is to make us better. Your job is to make you better. When we cross the white line on the pitch, we've talked about balance, but we need to train every day like we are in the final of the World Cup. And your job, if I'm a fullback and I'm against one of our wingers, I am going to make them feel every day like they're in a World Cup final. We are the reason we can win, and we have to believe that. You can put any opposition in front of us. They're just facilitating getting the best out of us. So that's what happened in the Olympics. US, whoever it was, put them in front of us, but we'll do us. So we are the reason that we can win this thing, and you have to keep coming back to that. You know that we did a bronze and we had to climb even harder to go and get a gold medal. Yet we didn't stand still, we kept climbing. We seem to thrive and grow on when no one expects us. Everyone thinks we just landed there and we were lucky. If we stand on the top and just hold on to that mountain, I think that does the absolute opposite of what got us there. This team has a unique ability to like persevere and when the going gets tough like that's when we show up. Bring your own identity. Each of you are here for a f***ing reason. And she scores! It is April 2023. Here, in the peaceful surroundings of rural France, Canada's women's national team is coming together for its final camp before heading to Australia for the World Cup. With eight critical days of training ahead, leading to a final friendly versus France, head coach Bev Priestman gathers the team to set the tone for an important camp. Okay team, um, welcome everybody. I thought I would start with this, so reflecting on the last camp, um, it was a difficult camp, I think you all would have come out with reflections. My own reflection is, when you're climbing through a storm, if you're related to climbing a mountain, you need to be led. And I think my own reflection is, I was in the fight with you, um, I was angry, I was frustrated, but it probably didn't get the best out of me to lead you through it. So let's push forward now and say, you know what? might make us, now we're moving forward, we have to. That's my job, is to make sure that we have no regrets when we get to the top of this mountain. As Canada continues its push towards the highest summit in women's football, they are helped on the climb by a familiar face in the program. Former star Melissa Tancredi, now Dr. Tancredi, remains a part of the team, now working with the medical staff to prepare the players for the World Cup. You know, the scary moment for me was obviously finishing with this team. This team was everything to me for my whole life. And um, to be able to be back in this environment and back in, in big games that matter and support this team any way possible is 
been amazing. And I think the staff is amazing. The players have been amazing. You know, I, I don't know if I could ever step away from this team. It's kind of hard, um, but for sure, it's definitely something I'm passionate about and something that for sure fills my cup. And yeah, excited to be on this journey. Tell the viewers where you're at in terms of goals. Look over your shoulder and say the number. Uh, we need to work on your thoracic mobility. 190. <laughs> 10 goals. We need 10 plus one for 201. Then you'll let me quit. Yeah. Then you can quit and become staff. As the team makes the short journey into the city of Rennes, they are preparing to take on heavyweights France in what will be their final public match leading into the World Cup. Under the lights and in the pouring rain, the teams contest a gritty first half, but at the break, there remains no score. More short passing, Linka play, Cascarino steps around, Chapman, it's up and it's way too easy as France find an opening. Grace Gayaro, her 15th goal for country. Sheridan gets herself in trouble, oh my word. Playing it out of the back has gone wrong once again for Canada, and it is a gift for Lea Legarek. Down by two goals, the Canadians come into an impromptu huddle to try and plot a route back into the game. Going forward in midfield, instead chooses the open revere. Just over the head of Jordan Heidema, played back towards Pico. It's loose, and Heidema has a gift of her own. Canada push hard for an equalizer but the match ends in a 2-1 loss. This team has never lost two games in a row, and they have. So that's a man of warning signs. If we don't learn, we can't climb. So I'm gonna keep hammering home that message. Two months later, and thousands of kilometers away. The World Cup preparation now shifts to the home front. As the media and marketing side of getting ready for the biggest tournament in the world now ramps up. My day has consisted of no food, one bathroom break. Caffeine. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Can I make you a present? All right, here we go. Pleasure. Today has been great. Um, pretty much just filming a shot of me shooting a free kick and a lot of smoke. And the kids, that's like, in a way, it's why we do what we do. And, you know, to be honest, I don't get to be back in Canada very often. So, yeah, it's nice to, to be able to interact with the kids, inspire them, take some pictures, and, yeah, you never know what one moment can do for a kid. It's nice to see that they know who soccer players are and that you know they're dreaming of playing for Canada one day. And I think just any eyes on the women's game is a good thing, um, especially here in Canada where doing something like this today, it's very important for me. Just down the road to the south of Vancouver, Head coach Bev Priestman is continuing her work to get the team ready for the tournament. She is also trying to make time for a few precious moments with her family before spending the summer down under. You know, I often get asked, like, what do you do outside of camps? Is it part-time? And I think the reality for any international coach and any international coach will tell you that it's not a 40-hour week, it's, it's non-stop. But just how I like it, to be honest, there's nothing worse for me than sitting still, I think. I'm juggling, right? I'm juggling a little boy, a family, and trying to be the best 
mum and wife I can be. But then also, I think, you know, life away from camp is review, preview, opposition scouting, and, and what we're currently doing at the minute is fine tooth comb of every little detail because I think what I have learned through major tournaments is all those little details matter and when you get on the ground in Australia it shouldn't be thinking about any of the planning the planning should be done it should feel calm I should feel clear right Jack I'm the goalkeeper see if you can score or should I put Billy in the goal? Yeah, I think Jack, he's constantly asking me, am I going on a plane to work or am I working on the laptop at home today? And I think that's probably his world, right? You know, I think in the value of powerful women in a high performance setting, I think, you know, you feel guilty at times that are oh, you the best mum that you can be? But I know that he's got to see his, his mum's go and try and do something special in what they do. Um, and, you know, he was too young for the gold medal moment, but I think you really take in this World Cup and, and what it's about and, and you know, and, and taking all that in. So it's it's a juggling act, but it's something I wouldn't change for the world. I keep my shoes on, though. No, I want to. Okay, I need it. I think trying to align schedules is the first problem that we have and juggling who's going to watch Jack if there's a clash. Having a wife who's in the same area as in football, we live and breathe it, but at the same time, away from work, we we don't talk about it too much, but I think what I would say is she's probably the one person who will tell me what I don't want to hear, and sometimes that's a good thing, right? Like, she'll tell me her opinion when I ask for it, and when I don't ask for it, she's there and supportive and is there for me through the highs and the lows. Steady, steady, black lights, go! Yeah! I know what you mean. That's quite unique, I think, to have two people in the same field. It brings its challenges, but at the same time, we wouldn't change it for the world. I think part of the reason we work is that we're passionate about the same thing, high performance, untapping human potential, that's a big part of what we do, um, and, and it works. And then you've, you've got a kid amongst all of that, that you know, at the end of the day, he wants to play on the trampoline, he wants to play soccer, and whether you've got a phone call or a work meeting at the same time, you've just got to juggle it. And I think that actually makes us who we are. At last, after a winding two-year road that has seen the team circumnavigate the globe, Canada arrive in Australia, where they will stay until their World Cup comes to an end. The players begin streaming in from cities all across the globe to settle in for two weeks of hard work in a pre-tournament training camp. The early sessions in Australia also mark the final push for the players who are battling for a spot on the World Cup roster. While working hard on the other side of the world on Canada Day, the team finds a way to keep the Canadian spirit alive. Wow. First of all, and I'm going to sing a classic Brian Adams song for you. Yeah. This will be the longest time we spent 
together and I think it's very important to just get that cohesiveness and that connection between the team. These players and the, the staff are my family. I appreciate them a lot and we have had a lot of moments together and we're going to make many more moments so I'm very comfortable around each and every one of my teammates. So it's, it's, um, it's not a big deal that I'm away from home. I'm happy that I'm here, grateful that I'm here. And also it's just exciting. The World Cup is just around the corner and this is where I want to be. I think coming here early, earlier than the normal, I think has helped, it helped us um, just in terms of like partnerships, how the team is rolling. It's definitely help us, helping us with the weather change. It, it can be nice and hot, it can be rainy and cold. So I think we're getting all the logistics out of the way um, heading into the World Cup. Prep work happens on and off the pitch. Nutritional monitoring, tactical meetings, and gym sessions are all crucial elements of pre-camp. This dedication to the process is what has helped bring back injured forwards Deanne Rose and Nichelle Prince to a position where they have the chance to make it back into the final Canadian squad. When I first went down um, against Brazil, it was our last game of the season, and it was just heartbreaking, um, just knowing knowing right away what I did um, and knowing that an Achilles rupture takes a long time to recover from. I, I really didn't know what the World Cup and my future with that was gonna look like. My surgeon told me it'd be seven to nine months to get back and I was like, okay, well, you know, World Cup is an eight, so. <laughs> Knowing that I had a chance, I, I truly, I, every day I just, that was my goal, to just make some small gains to get back on the field and um, just give it at all. And if it happens and I get to make that roster, then yeah, I would just be so grateful, so yeah. When I first saw Deanne in camp, we both just had like a moment, like I'm like tearing up a bit just because we both just knew what we had been through in the last few months. Like it, it's been tough and when you're going through an injury, you sometimes just feel so isolated and no one really knows all the small things that you have to do to get back. And so I know that her journey has not been easy. It's been tough and I, she knew, knew that I had been in that same situation. And so again, just to like not know if we would be on this team and seeing the both of us back in camp, it was it was truly a special moment to be like, oh, wow, we, we, we made it, we did this. <laughs> it's decision day, and Bev Priestman is tasked with finalizing her 23-player World Cup right, right, roster. Right, right. After making her senior team debut at 15 years old in 2019, and scoring 12 goals in the eight games for the under 20s since the start of the year. 18-year-old Olivia Smith has found her way into Priestman's pre-camp and is knocking on the door for a spot in the 23. While some will leave disappointed, others will have their hard work rewarded with the opportunity to represent Canada at football's highest level. I've got the wonderful job of waiting for people. What's that? I'm really crying. <laughs> no. um, so I wanted to say that um, I'm so proud of you. Thank You've you. been unbelievable. You lit it up yesterday. Um, so I'm so pleased to tell you in the World Cup. I think you knew that, but I feel like yeah. I needed to officially yeah. tell you. Yeah. yeah, because you put so, so much work in. So I'm super proud of you and I can't wait to go and do this thing with you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I need, I couldn't just text you that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. No, but you were outstanding yesterday. It was Thank lovely you. to have you back, so. Hey, Nisha, how are you doing? Good. I'm good. So, I'm incredibly proud of you. You've made the World Cup. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, you know what, you've defied all odds and I think that speaks to your character, your hard work. Um, the minute you were on there yesterday you lit it up and there's no way this team can go to the World Cup without you so oh I'm so Thank proud you. of you. Come here, give us a hug. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. Your family so will be much. so proud of you because you've put in the hard work so. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, I'm literally so honored. And, yeah. Yeah, thank you. No, you no worries. Chance. Let's do this thing, eh? Yeah, let's do this. We got this. Okay, well yeah. done. Thank you. Congrats. Hey, Liv, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good. I just thought we'd have a chance to connect after, before you went to Koala Sanctuary and a yeah. bit of a review <laughs> after the last uh, few days. How have you found it all? Good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm enjoying my time here. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, so listen, this might come as a bit of a shock to you, but you're going to the World Cup. Stop. You are, yeah. I, um, I, you've come in, you've done outstanding. Um, you know, we've had some conversations along the way. You've gone away, you've worked hard, and I want to reward all your hard work. Um, you've come in, you fit in really, really well, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be in the 23. So. Welcome. And I'm not the only one who thinks that either. You've come in and made a big impression, so yeah, well done. <laughs> you know who you need to give a call? Cindy and Joy. Because I know, I know they pushed you. Um, yeah, well done. Big, you put a big shift in to get to where you are. Um, but massive well done. All right, so now you've got to call your family and tell them. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Kira. Well done, congratulations. congratulations. Hey, well done, awesome. You weren't expecting that, eh? You got me in tears, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Here we go. There we go. Survive. Yeah. Survive. <laughs> With the final roster confirmed, Priestman gathers her squad for one final push towards match day one at the FIFA Women's World Cup. We want to get everybody together for the final 23 before we head into this World Cup of first. So for those that aren't aware, this World Cup, it's the first time 32 teams. It's the first time it's been held across two countries um, and first time on this part of the continent, as well as Hopefully, the first time that Canada goes and wins this thing, okay? When you look at these faces, you look at the people in the room, I know nobody underestimates it. There's been some heartbreaks for people that aren't in this room, but I think the people that are in this room are ready to go and uh, give it our best crack. So, to get everyone out of the comfort zone, you know we love this. So, the rules are you're allowed to pick something out, and then I want you to throw the ball to someone that you want to answer it. Good choice. <laughs> what I'm trying to do now is just appreciate every single moment because it's, it's not given and it's not promised. Um, you just never know if you're going to get another World Cup, if you're going to get another game. And so just trying to embrace every moment on and off the field with all the guys. So. One piece of advice you would give. It's got to be someone wise. <laughs> I knew you. <laughs> One piece of advice. Say, you don't know what could happen. Every single game, you give it all. And I think this team, when that happens, even if it's one person at a different time, different game, that's when this team does something special. And just knowing that you don't want to be where I am, you know, looking back at that moment, the what ifs, the could ifs, and now reliving it through you, you want to live it firsthand on that field. So my first and only piece of advice would be give it all every single chance you get. The team head north to the Sunshine Coast, where England are waiting to face off in a closed-door match. A title fight on any other evening. This match between Olympic and European champions is greeted by only a sunset and a cool breeze.
Despite their best efforts, neither team can find a winner. The game ends as it began, with no score. Real now. Yeah. All right. Everything we do from here on out, lift the trophy at the end of this tournament. All right. So proud of everyone today. We should beat these guys. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 We got to beat them when it matters. Okay. Yeah. Do this. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, With the kickoff for the tournament now just days away, the team receives a series of inspirational messages from their fans back home. Happy birthday! Oh! These are cute! Are these for us? Good luck! <laughs> Good luck trying to win! <laughs> Thank you. Wow. We'll try our best. It is now the eve of battle. And Canada head to the stadium in Melbourne, where their FIFA Women's World Cup journey will begin. thing all 23 players are just as important as each other so there might be 11 stepping on the pitch to start the game tomorrow but in order to go all the way we need everybody on the bus and what I would say you've been absolutely outstanding all 23 today give everything to make sure that we're ready for tomorrow so I'd like to thank everyone for that the second thing I'd like to say is a big thank you to the staff I think we've had two and a half three weeks and to the players for the you've give everything You've been focused, you've worked hard, and the moment's arrived, 12.30 tomorrow. And for some of you, you've waited your whole life to be at this point, it'll be your first World Cup, yeah? So we leave this World Cup with nothing left. And for some of you, like Singh said to me in the car, I've waited four years for this, yeah? From your last World Cup. So it's time to put that bit right, okay? So the moment's here, we're ready. We stick together right till the very end of tomorrow's game, but all the way to the end of the tournament. Because what I do know, a family wins this thing. Yeah, a family is what won us the gold medal in Tokyo. And we keep that no matter what, highs, lows, whatever. We stay tight, we stay together, and we can go all the way, okay? So let's do this, 12.30 tomorrow, this place will be full. All right? Yeah. 